All right, what's good, Creative Fam? Brandon Washington here, and today we are taking a look at a handful of wireless transmitters, along with this guy here, which is a wireless follow focus system. Now, when it comes to being on set, I have a massive pet peeve, and that is having directors or having other people just around me when I am filming. Now, I am kind of claustrophobic. Claustrophobic? How do you pronounce it? Claustrophobic? Claustrophobic? Yeah, I am kind of claustrophobic. So when it comes to actually having a ton of people around me on set, it can really start to mess with me creatively and kind of start to bother me. And so one thing that I quickly found a long time ago was getting a wireless transmitter system. By having a wireless transmitting system, I can have my footage from my camera being beamed to another monitor or even television, and that can get people kind of away from me and the camera, but also it just gives people a place to kind of congregate around and be able to actually see the footage that's being captured because I get it. Everybody wants to see what the camera's getting and everyone wants to get excited by the finished shot and everyone being around the camera also doesn't really work. These are the Axoon Cineas 2S Pros. Now I have absolutely loved these and actually did an entire video on these and Axoon actually sent these out to me back then and I've been using them ever since. But one of the biggest things that I have been looking for is something smaller. So check these guys out. These are the brand new Axoon Cineview SE and they also did make an HE. Now Axoon was nice enough to send these out so this video is sponsored. But as I mentioned before, I used the older version. So when these came out, I was really pretty much planning on picking them up anyway. So thank you guys for sponsoring the video. These guys are pretty awesome in the past. They told me, you know, just kind of make the video and show people what it can do. And we don't care if you say something bad about it. So we're gonna see if we can find any faults with these products as we actually go about testing them. But what I'm really excited about these for is the fact that one, you can clearly just see, just like right off of the jump, just look at the size difference. It's not even close. Like it's sort of ridiculous how much smaller they've made them. But on top of making them smaller, they've actually supposedly made them better. Now I am excited to test these out and really see how good they are because I mean, great, it's smaller, but it doesn't actually help me if it doesn't work any better. A couple quick things. Obviously, you have the SE and you have the HE. And with the SEs here, these have SDI. And with the HEs, they just have HDMI. And really, that's the only major difference between the two. So if you're rocking a camera that only works with HDMI, like one of the Canon mirrorless cameras or even like a Sony, then the HEs are probably gonna be just good enough for you. But if you do have a camera that has SDI, um, then I probably recommend going with the SEs and they do have HDMI on them as well. So you can kind of go back and forth between the different cameras. But if you don't have SDI, then yeah, I, I do recommend going with the HEs here because then you actually have loop in and out on the HEs, uh, which is kind of a nice bonus that you don't get with the SEs. All right, now one of the most important things when it comes to using a wireless transmitter and receiver system is having something to actually send the signal to. With each set, you're not only gonna get your transmitter, which is what you're actually gonna hook up to your camera and send the signal out to, but you're also gonna have a receiver. Now with a receiver, you can send the signal directly to a monitor. So like in this case here, I have this monitor from Port Keys, which is actually weirdly like perfectly built for this transmission system. Like literally it has a spot on the back. It actually just attaches directly to it. And then when you slide the batteries in, they land like basically perfectly where they don't interfere with the actual transmitter. I mean, look at that. That looks freaking flawless. Like that's one of the best systems I've ever seen. Like it's so perfectly built for each other. So I'll actually have this monitor linked down below as well. Cause it's a nice seven inch monitor. But the nice thing is that like, if you don't even have a monitor right now, but you still wanna work with like a wireless transmission system, you can still totally do that. This system here will actually put out a signal that if you download their companion app, you can then see that signal directly on the app on your phone. The nice thing about this is if you have multiple people on set, you can have up to four people receiving a signal, one going to a monitor and then having three other people connecting via an app, whether that's on an iPhone or an iPad, which on an iPad would be nice because then you can kind of like split screen and kind of see the signal as well as maybe have like your script supervisor on it. Something like that would be cool. 
So along with these wireless transmission systems, Axon also just came out with this guy. This is the wireless follow focus system, the FCO1. And I really do like how this thing works. The only real major downside that I find with this is it's kind of hard to rig this to a lot of things. So for example, it comes with this sort of quick release system, which is really nice and kind of easy to work with. Uh, as I struggle to actually get it off. You can rig this to like the side of your camera or to the side of a monitor. Like in this case here, I could actually rig this right here to the side of the monitor and then attach my wireless follow focus system directly to it. The only downside is that is the only way to actually rig this thing onto anything. If you don't have this plate here, well then this has no thread points on it. It has nothing to actually like mount to anything. So if you don't have this or you lose this or something like that, you're gonna kind of be in trouble, which is sort of a downside. I would really love to see like a quarter thread like here or like have like a rosette like kind of pre-attached on here that then could work with a lot more systems. It would just allow it to be a bit more flexible in how you could use it. But as far as the actual functionality of the follow focus system, it's super smooth and very easy to calibrate. One of my favorite features on it is the fact that you can set A and B points and then it will only allow you to turn it to those A and B points, allowing you to do quick focus racks super easily. So as far as a wireless follow focus system that works within this system, I think this actually works out really good and it's pretty easy to operate. I didn't even read the instructions and I figured it out in like 20 minutes. So I know what you guys are thinking, how good is the actual wireless transmission system? Well, let's first talk about what they say they can do and then let's go outside and actually test it and see how good it truly is. Now, they say that you should be able to get up to 1,200 feet line of sight. Now. That's pretty far. Also, when it comes to the delay on this thing, they are saying 50 milliseconds. Now, for my quick testing that I've done, it is taking about 0.14 seconds as far as the delay is concerned. Now, there's a lot of reasons that could be causing that. It could be the type of SDI cables I have. It could be because we're actually routing the transmitter through the monitor. So there's a couple different reasons, but even with that slight delay, there really is no problem pulling focus with any of these systems. So let's go ahead, head outside and see how good these things are in the field. For this scientifically non-scientific test, we have the red Komodo rigged with the transmitter here. This is the SE and then the SE receiver here going into the monitor. And as you can see here, this is a live feed with very little latency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the camera here and I'm gonna walk away with the receiver and see how far away I can get before the receiver starts to cut out. Now, I'm gonna try my best to stay line of sight, but for the most part, I mean, there's pretty much just trees out here. So I'm just gonna start walking in a general direction and see how far away I get before I lose that signal. Then what we'll do is we'll pull the phone up and we will see how far away I can get with the phone. All right, so we are now across the parking lot parking lot is over there and we are currently the signal is still strong but it's kind of starting to glitch out a little bit we'll keep going i still have signal but it has dropped out twice and i still have signal so i guess i should keep walking i guess no still got it what the heck how far away are we gonna go Okay, so we still have signal. I'm starting to feel like I'm too far away in the wrong direction. And so taking this thing out on a walk uh, was interesting to say the least. The signal dropped as we saw twice, but each time it dropped, it like quickly reconnected. Now that could be due to a couple different reasons. One, it could be just I moved from behind a tree or something like that that was out here. What I think was probably actually happening was this thing does have two different frequencies that it's actually using in order to create the wireless transmission. So it's using 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz, and it's constantly working with both of them at the same time in order to give you a really reliable signal. What I think was happening was it was dropping and switching between the two but I don't know, I'm not a scientist. What I can say is that I walked away from my camera much further than I'll ever walk away from my camera on set. So as far as this thing having really reliable, you know, distance, I can actually say that I'm really surprised. Like I was walking 
way across the parking lot, way across the street, and into the neighborhood down on the other side of the street, and my signal was still holding true. So far, when it's like, okay, I'm at this point, I'm just too far away, it doesn't matter to go any further. I wanna see how well the phone does. Now, I have a really strong feeling that the phone is going to cut out before the receiver. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, well then why would you wanna use this over the receiver? Maybe you don't. Maybe the receiver, in my opinion, is actually gonna be better for monitoring your actual shot. But the phone does have some additional features that really can be beneficial on set, even just as a backup device. One of the biggest ones is that you can actually record your feed directly to your phone. So there's a red record button here, and if I tap on that, I can actually record exactly what I'm getting from the transmitter. Also, you have the ability to go live directly from your phone. So if your phone has decent cellular service, you could take this wireless feed that's coming from your transmitter to your phone, and you can actually live stream that information directly from the transmitter. So this means you technically can go live anywhere as long as you have decent cell service on the phone. And then of course, all of your basic monitoring tools you'd expect to have on any monitor you do have here on the phone. So this means if you don't even have a monitor to even connect to your receiver right now, you can still benefit from this and the latency is still super fast. I would still say that you can pull focus even using the app on the phone. All right, so we're on the same walk. So we can see there, we've got ourselves a nice live feed. Video is playing. You can see there, it's glitching a little bit. I think it's lost. It's frozen. Oh, there it is. Signal's gone, transmitter's gone. There's the building over there. We're back from testing these. What do I think? Well, first off, personally, I absolutely love how reliable this system is. As you guys saw, I walked very far away from the actual camera itself and still maintained a really good signal. Even testing it on the phone, I found that I could actually move fairly far away. It wasn't obviously nearly as far away as the actual receiver, but I could still keep a pretty good signal directly on the phone. And the delay between the phone and the receiver seemed to be exactly the same. So there seemed to be no major use case difference from there other than all of the major benefits that you get when working with the phone. Now, that being said, you might still be asking yourself, okay, great, they're wireless transmitters, they work. Brandon, how do they work for me? Well, let me show you just a couple examples of how this could really benefit you on set. Now, you may not have a monitor like this, but you might have ambitions of actually using a wireless follow focus system like this. Well, the nice thing is that if you are using the transmitter and you're using the wireless follow focus system, you can connect this directly to like a handle and have your phone attached and wirelessly pull focus just using your phone. And now you get all the benefits of using the phone app and you can still pull focus just using this device. I like this setup because it's lightweight, it's easy to keep charged, and quite honestly, the phone having the ability to record as an additional backup is just kind of nice to have on set. Another great way you can use wireless transmitters like this is if you're on set and you're working with a fairly large crew, well, all you need to do is bring out a television, hook up your receiver to the actual television, and now everybody can see what the camera is getting, including playback. This is huge because now everyone can look at the screen and actually be able to see what needs to be fixed. So if you need somebody to adjust the light or to make tweaks to the subject, all those things can happen and people can see it on a much larger screen. And as I said before, just because of my own personal pet peeve, it keeps people away from the camera. And then a third reason why all this might come in handy for you is if you're someone like myself, you're a filmmaker, but you're also a YouTuber or a content creator and you film yourself quite frequently. And you know those little screens on the back of your camera, it's just really not large enough for you to be able to check your framing and film yourself. Well, with these wireless transmitters, you can either have it go directly to your phone or connect it to a much bigger screen. And you can see yourself and be able to make all those minor adjustments to your framing, including focus, that you need to in order to create the best video possible. The benefit of using this over a long HDMI cable, for example, is just safety. Having long cables running through your set really can just become a tripping hazard. And if you trip and knock something over, well, that's just gonna ruin your entire time of filming. So do I think you absolutely need one of these? No, but honestly, I think they really do play a good hand in helping you have a better time while filming, and they just come in handy in so many different situations. That's my thoughts on the Cineview HE and SE. They're definitely gonna replace my uh, 
two S Pros over there, but honestly, I think they're absolutely worth it. But let me know what you guys think about these. If you have any questions about them, or maybe I forgot to mention one of the benefits that you've heard somewhere else, leave those down in the comments for other people to check out so that way we can all grow together. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.